Hi, and welcome to my talk. My name is Marcin Wienkowski, and I will tell you about non-metric passive location, its online variant, and deterministic algorithm for that problem. So this is a joint work with Karen Pocord from the University of Paderborn and Pavel Schmidt from the University of Warsaw. Let me start with a definition. What is a facility location? First, starting with an offline variant. We have a set of potential facilities, places for building these facilities, and a set of clients. And our goal is to satisfy all these clients by connecting each client to some open facility. To this end, of course, we need to open some set of facilities. So one of the possible solutions for this particular set of clients would be to open the first and the third facility, pay for their opening cost, and then pay also the distances between clients and chosen facilities. And the cost, total cost, is the cost of all facilities open and the cost of connections of a given client. Right, so that's the offline facility. And we, it comes with two flavors. One is the metric flavor, when the distances satisfy triangle inequality, and the non-metric case where these distances can be arbitrary. Uh, in particular, there can be no distance between a given client and a facility. Right, so what is known about this problem? Um, the problem is NP complete, so we can only hope for approximation algorithms. And then uh, the metric case admits constant competitive solutions. Whereas for the non metric case, by the reduction to the set cover problem, the achievable approximation ratios are logarithmic in the number of clients. Okay, so. That's it for the offline facility location. In the online case, it is very similar, but the set of that we don't have the set of clients, but we have a set of potential clients. So the whole graph between facilities and potential clients is given up front, but we will have a set of A active clients that will arrive online. So only some set of potential clients will be activated, and we need to service these particular clients. In, for example, we might have this client that appears and we perhaps connect it greedily to the closest facility. We open this facility and we connect it to it. And then we have the next client and then we cannot connect it to this facility that is already open. So we need to open an additional facility. Uh, and at this point, the service, the input sequence may stop. And we realized that if we knew the set of clients from, then we could open just the first facility and connect both clients to it, probably at a cheaper cost than we already paid. So our goal is to compare ourselves to the optimal offline solution. And this ratio between our cost and this opt is called competitive ratio and this subject to minimization. Okay, so what is known for the online case, where the metric case is basically solved. So the competitive ratio achievable is log A over log log A. A is the number of uh, active clients. And it is tied, asymptotically tied for randomized and deterministic solutions. For the non-metric facility location, the situation is less clear. So we have an upper bound uh, by Alon et al, quite an old one, which is log F times log A competitive, uh, where F is the number of facilities, A is the number of active clients. And the situation for deterministic algorithms is even less clear because we have only a lower bound, which is roughly log F times log C, where C is the number of all potential clients. And, uh, so far, it has been no published deterministic result. So if you were paying close attention to the last sentence, then you realize that I emphasized published here. So in fact, there is something that was known to some people. So if you 
look at the metric facility location, then you can reduce it to the set cover problem. And it has been known in the offline algorithm regime, uh, but it could be also applied to some extent in the online case. And then we could use the polylog competitive algorithm for the set cover problem to solve the original non-metric facility location problem. However, if you take the standard textbook reduction, then it reduces the non-metric facility location to the set cover problem, but the number of sets will be exponential in this case. And uh, then the resulting ratio will be at least linear in the number of facilities, which is far from being satisfactory for us. So what we do, we can use, however, a less known reduction, which is not an exact reduction, but it preserves the cost to the constant factor. And, um, it, and it doesn't have this nasty blow up in the number of facilities. And if you apply this, and combine it with the deterministic online algorithm for the set cover problem, then we will get log C plus log F times log C plus log log F competitive solution. So that's it presented on this uh, slide for where we gather all the results. Uh, and if you compare this to the lower bound, then you realize that what is not nice is this log C factor. In particular, with the number of clients is much, much larger than the number of facilities, these two bounds, upper bound and the lower bound, are not really matching. So what is our result? We are able to get rid of this log C factor. And this is the main result of our paper. Here. And uh, if you look at these two bounds, then they are matching up to log log factors. OK. So let me present you some ideas and challenges that we had to solve in order to get our bound. And I will start with a random description of a rough description of a randomized algorithm. And then I will tell you how to adapt it uh, to get a deterministic solution. OK, so what, a, what is the randomized solution? In this randomized algorithm by Alan et al, uh, we have an input and the solution proceeds in two stages. In the first one, you build a so-called a fractional solution to the problem where you are not specifying which facilities to buy and which connections to use, but you assign fractions between zero and one to each facility. And this tells you how much fractionally a given facility is open. And you also assign similar fractions between some similar numbers between zero to one to the connections. Okay. And uh, in order for the client to be covered, these numbers have to satisfy some restrictions that I will tell you about in a second. But this is a pretty standard, well, it is pretty standard approach right now. It hasn't been that uh, standard in the 15 years ago. Um, and after that, you pass this fractional solution also in online manner to the rounding box, which, which is basically telling you if something, some uh, fraction is greater than a given number chosen randomly, then you round it up to the, and you buy corresponding facility or, or connection. Okay, so, and I will I would like to emphasize that this random proceeds in online manner. So it's uh, kind of a pipe from the fractional solution to the integral solution, which reacts to the increase of fractions. And it can only buy additional facilities and buy additional connection cannot revoke its past actions. Okay, so that's for the randomized algorithm. Uh, I promise that I will tell you what is the, what does it mean in fractional solution that the client is serviced? Well, it can be serviced partially by all this facility that is partially connected to. And we simply take for a given facility, its fraction and the fraction that corresponds to the connection 
from the client to, the, to this facility. So for example, for the first facility, it covers, and you take the minimum of that. So the first facility covers the client uh, to the extent of 0 0.3. The second one gives us 0 0.3 service. And the third one gives us 0 0.4 service. And altogether, if you sum these three fractions, then you get the coverage, uh, then you get the total coverage, which is at least one. And this means that the client is fully serviced in the fractional world. Okay, so now let me explain you what are the challenges and problems with rounding. So if you have this fractional solution and assume that it's already feasible, then you might have two different ways of rounding. it. First is that you treat facilities and connections completely separately. Each is a given object, and if it exceeds some given threshold, then you round it up to a given to to an integral uh, purchase decision. However, this might easily lead to an infeasible solution uh, because you might you don't have the dependency, you don't have the consistency between buying facilities and connecting clients to it, as illustrated on example. In the randomized world, in the randomized rounding, uh, it was solved by choosing common thresholds for facilities and connection. However, it is not clear how to, uh, how to handle that in the deterministic world. So the second thing that, we, that is partially working in the deterministic solution is, to, is the following. You forget about the connections from a client to the facility. You round only the facilities. This gives you a feasible solution, well, not yet. But then you connect greedily the client to the closest open facility. You ensure that such facility exists. And this greedy choice and ensures that the generated solution is feasible. However, it might be very costly, incomparably more costly than the fractional one, because you might connect to the facility that is very far away from you, whereas the fractional solution connects more to facilities that are close to you. So, to, so this dependency between facilities and the clients is the uh, major problem that we are solving here. Okay, so let me tell you one more, well, not challenge here, but a uh, tool that we are going to use. So there is an algorithm for deterministic set cover problem online set cover problem. Uh, and it shows how to, well, this is one of the few successful approaches of deterministic online rounding. And basically the abstract view on that is the following. So you have some fractional assignment of values of weights to, to objects. In, in this case, this, these are facilities. You group these facilities in arbitrary sets. And now this online rounding has the following property that it is a process that transforms this fractional solution to the integral one, which satisfies the following invariant. For any set where the total fractional weight of all these objects is at least one, the total integral weight in the integral solution in the same set is also at least one. In the integral world, this translates to a property that is simply this a given set contains some facility. Okay, So this is something that you, with a proper definition of sets, you might treat as a black box. OK, and additionally, they show that this rounding is logarithm in the number of these sets. OK, so what is our deterministic algorithm? How do we use these things? Well, the bird eye view on that is that we have some input. And again, we have two stages. We will have some LP, which is not standard. I will explain that to you in a while what it means. It gives us some correlation between the assignment of fractions, assignment of weights to the facilities and to the connections. Not full, but something that we can exploit. 
it gives it uh, uses this primal dual scheme of um, of generating feasible fractional solution, which is different for the facilities and different for the connections. And afterwards, we create carefully these sets that I told you a slide ago. And then for these sets, we apply this Allen et al rounding, deterministic rounding, which will give us the, some integral solution on the facilities. And then we connect the client to the closest facility and our choice of the sets will ensure that the closest facility is quite close in the integral solution as well. So that this greedy choice is actually cheap. This is comparable to the fractional cost. Okay, so that's the general view. Let me delve into some details. So fix, let's fix a single client and let's consider a fractional solution. Um, so what we do first, we group facilities by distances. We assume that the distances are powers of two. And what we are doing, we are increasing the fractions corresponding to connections and to the facilities in the following way. So there is beneath this thing, there is an LP that I'm not going to show you, but let me give you some ideas. So this LP, approach will invest some money into buying these fractions. This budget will grow with, at a constant rate. So you may think about this as a gro growth of dual variables. And you spend, you split this budget into two parts. One part, one half goes to increase of the connection variables. The second half of the budget goes into increasing the facilities, increasing the fractions corresponding to fraction, the weights of facilities that, to which you already fractionally bought connections, okay? And the process of buying the connections follows one by one. So you buy one, one connection at a time. So let me give you some example. You first buy, and this is of course this, this first distance, this first connection is very cheap, so you buy it very fast. And then you have a first set, which is of facilities that to which you uh, may connect to. And this set becomes active. And that from that point on, we increase the weights of all these facilities using multiplicative weight update rules. Okay. And then in parallel to that, we are buying the second connection. Once we bought it, we make this facilities active also, and we increase the we increase the weights of the, all these facilities that are in the, are in these two sets using again MWU. And in parallel to that, we buy the third connection. In this case, we are not we have just bought a part of it. And then we realize that our fractional solution is already feasible. What it means to be feasible, it is quite similar to what we had previously, but right now we are saying that the coverage is given by the group of facilities, not by a single facility. And so the coverage for the, of the first group is the weight of total weight of facilities in the first group. And you take the minimum of that and the uh, weight that correspond to the connection variable. This connection variable is one. And uh, so that basically it means that you have 0 0.3 here, you have 0 0.4 there. And for the third one, uh, for, the, for the third group, you have 0 0.3. And that's basically the last group of facilities that's contributed because for the next ones, the connection variables are zero. So they effectively cancel the, uh, possibility of covering, of, of using the remaining facilities to, um, to serve the client. Okay, so the total coverage here is one already, and at that point we consider our client fractionally served. 
Now, how do we deterministically round this thing? So we define four sets here, S1, S2, S3, and S4. These are the number of them is the same as the number of uh, group of CVTs. And we simply pass these fractional solutions in these corresponding sets to the randomized, uh, so the deterministic rounding by Alan et al. And because we, our solution was fractionally feasible, it means that already in the set SJ, this red one, the total weight of all facilities has to be at least one, okay? Because the other ones cannot really contribute. The, the ones that are outside of the set cannot really contribute to the satisfying the needs of this customer. And because of that, it means that this fractional, so this deterministic solution, this deterministic rounding will buy at least one facility in set SJ. The second property is that because our distances are powers of two, then the total fractional connection cost that we pay is corresponds to the length of the last, uh, of the last edge that we were considering that we were actually assigning non-zero uh, fraction to. And therefore, and this last uh, edge cost is roughly two to the J, which says that the total fractional cost is of order two to the J, right? Now, what it means, it means that the, as I said, the integral solution opens at least facility in the set SJ. And it means that if we connect to that, we pay at most to the J and therefore our connection cost to, of this client is basically the same as the cost of the connection in the fractional solution. All right, so again, let me recap and tell you what is the competitive ratio here. We have an input and we pass it through the LP. Uh, we can use a standard, quite standard um, proof techniques to show that the competitive ratio is log F. And next, we apply the black box solution by Allen et al, showing that the competitive ratio in this part is log of uh, the number of sets. The number of sets is log delta, where delta is the, uh, the aspect ratio of the metric times the number of clients. And you take the logarithm of that. This is maybe not very nice, but we can use standard techniques like doubling and guessing the value of opt by doubling. And once we have a given value of opt, then we can get rid of uh, irrelevant facilities, the facilities that are too costly, the facilities that are cheap, we can pre-purchase up front. And using all these uh, little smart techniques, uh, we can bound the value of the aspect ratio by C times F. And then the resulting competitive ratio in the second part is log C times log C plus log log F. And you need to multiply it by the competitive ratio of the first part. And this gives you our result. So once again, I would like to emphasize that this bound is matching up to log log factors. And this concludes my talk. Thanks a lot and see you on the conference.